This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato, but more importantly, everything you wanted or needed to know about money, you're about to find out. Okay. Yeah, well, you better have it because you're <laughs> okay. the one we have here. Laurie Sackler, under pressure here. the okay. author of The M Word, the money talk that every family needs to have about wealth and their financial future. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Why is the M word such a hard word to actually not just say, but talk about? What's up with families and money? Well, money is a taboo subject. It's a cause of strife in U.S. households, and there are a lot of factors that interfere. So when you ask why is it difficult, so there's issues just below the surface, such as control and trust and, and health. not having enough. Not having enough, <laughs> right? And right. then there's another set of factors that go more psychologically, deeper. How about money? Yes. Psychological, by the way, I should make it clear that you do have credentials here. Tell folks about your credentials. Okay, well, okay. People are like, who is she to be talking about this? Let's go. Okay, so I'm a senior vice, I have to give my title, Senior Vice President of Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Oh, stop bragging. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I'm like, and, uh, and I'm, a, I'm a CPA, a CFP, and a Certified Investment Management Analyst. A lot of alphabet so letters. I, 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 like I have that. a lot of licenses. Yes, I'm of, impressed. Okay. So, but what do you mean the psychological stuff? It's just money. Well, it's very psychological. So let's talk about some of the factors that are hidden below. It's uh, gender, marriage politics, age, attitude, family history, culture, evolutionary instincts, behavioral patterns, and even the language that people use when they talk about money. Language. So I try to explore the factors and help people understand them and overcome them in the M word. Okay, so here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I have some friends. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I like that. it. Start with the story. I have friends, okay. which some people may actually find hard to believe in and of itself. I have some friends who um, just refused, guy friends, who do not talk to their significant others, you know who you are, they do not talk to their wives or their significant others in a serious way about money. And their attitude is, that's my responsibility, I won't talk to them about it, and then inevitably they wind up in these very difficult financial situations and they, it just gets worse. And I say, are you going to talk to her about it? Right. And then it's too late and bad things happen. Lots of tension and some of those people aren't together anymore, you say? Yeah, so in marriages, you know, money is the central theme. Is and, it? Well, I thought yeah. it was sex. It's, well, that, okay, so they're tied together. Th what? <laughs> well, Wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> money and sex are tied together? Well, let me explain to you. On an evolutionary, it's instinctual getting more complicated. level, Go ahead. money is tied to sexual exchanges that were part of money transactions in primitive societies. And as a res result, money and family are unconsciously linked and equally uncomfortable to talk about, and they're connected with a fair amount of angst and anger and fear and lots of emotions and if you know when entering a marriage it's important to have the money conversation before wow. and full disclosure is the objective and because I find that when families when marriage when partners don't talk about money it's a sign that there may be other problems going on as well. You decided to write this book um, for a lot of reasons. Right? You've been talking about money for a long time. In what venues have you been talking about it? Well, I have many roles. Yes, I'm you a, do. I'm a mother, and I'm a, um, a, a wife, and a financial advisor, and in a lot of, and, and, a, and a friend as well. And as I started to see, um, I started to witness uh, in all my different roles, families and their finances being torn apart. I was seeing finances disrupted across multiple generations because there hadn't been proper planning and communication around money. And when I started to do my research, I saw that my little nucleus of the world is part of a much bigger picture. There's a 70% failure rate in transferring wealth across generations. It's a worldwide statistic. And the breakdown in communication and trust is at the heart of these failed transfers and loss of money and family harmony. But break that down. Yeah, I was confused so, by that. So in transferring wealth across generations, right. in 70% of the time, um, what there's happens? A, there, well, what happens is a failure is defined as loss of control of assets through mismanagement, poor investments, or the like. And oftentimes it's, it's eaten up through litigation and so, so uh, for conflict. Example, say there are siblings mm -hmm. and they start arguing over assets of the parents, whatever, and they're not communicating clearly and they go to litigation. A lot of that money gets eaten up because their inability to communicate effectively. Well, I think it goes 
let's go back a little okay. bit. It actually starts with the family and the way the estate plan was created and the way that the, uh, the family members who were transferring the wealth. Um, they did it in secret. Well, they didn't talk about it. They didn't do, there wasn't proper planning. We don't talk about money in our family. Right. Right? Right. There was, and there was no, and, and oftentimes there's no discussion and there may also not be any real planning. So, um, and that becomes a real problem. But, but devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I told you before we got in the end, my wife Jennifer and I are, are very open with each other about, about money. Um, I think it's great. Uh, well, because it's my second marriage. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> you learned. Yeah, and I don't want to have a third. Uh, so I learned a lot about the way we communicate about things. And that doesn't mean we see things the same way about money, but it's just very open mm -hmm. in that way. Um, but here's my point. Sometimes there's a part of me that says, this isn't a lot of fun. Mm. It's not very sexy mm. to talk about money, to talk about estate planning, to talk about life insurance, to talk about sending the kids to school, to talk about what it takes to do those things. But what? Well, if you don't, you run the risk of not only losing the estate um, that you spent time building and managing uh, in the transfer to the next generation, but you could create a lot of conflict between various family members. So people who do this right, there tends to be plenty of communication, mm. lots of preparation, uh, opportunities, targeted times to talk to family members, to prepare them, to educate them, so that there can be a successful and smooth transition. And that's what I'm really, it's my goal, is to help families keep their finances and their family members and the relationships intact through all of life's transitions. But you also believe that, that that it's very hard for individuals to do this themselves, and you do need some outside help. Yes. How do you get really good outside help? Well, I liken it to picking your medical advisors. You know, people go to great length to find the right doctors when it's a serious issue. And I feel that expertise is required in whatever, with whatever transition point you're dealing with in life. Finding the right team of experts is really critical. So I spend a considerable amount of time helping people pick these right, uh, these right advisors, and I provide some tools, some questions, some guidelines. So there should be plenty of due diligence and uh, interviewing, asking the right questions. But you want to figure out which of the advisors you need, depending on the circumstances and the, the issues that you're dealing with. You're talking about people, before I chatter, you're talking about people who have the kind of assets that would require them to have financial not, advice. Or is it anybody? Not necessarily. I say regardless of economics, really? size configuration, gender composition, that these conversations need to take place. Now granted, the larger the estate, the more complicated and maybe more professionals required. But the conversation is difficult regardless of whether or not you have $10,000 or $10 million. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And the kids are going to fight over it and they're gonna, there's going to be conflict if you don't prepare for that transition you know, wisely. The, the M word should not be so taboo. Thank you. The M word, the money talk that every family needs to have about wealth and their financial future. Lori Sackler. And the website to learn more information, themword.com. Themword.com. Hey, thank you, Lori. Thank you. This Very was helpful. great. No, stay right there. Don't oh, run. Don't oh, run. sorry. You want to get out of here so soon? No, I thought you were done. I got questions when we get off the air. Oh, okay. Right I'm happy. We'll be right back right after this. Okay. <laughs> thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Wells Fargo, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey Council of County Colleges, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, PSENG, and by Verizon Communications. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.